Hey everybody, this is GB Wang. Um, wanted to share with you guys a game of Star Jewel that I had played recently, and I finally managed to beat the Insane AI. And I thought this was kind of interesting because I I managed to do it in a way that um, that's kind of uncommon. Like if you look at a lot of the videos on YouTube, um, the way that that other players have beaten the Insane AI is with a ghost mech build. And so what they do is they end up making uh, a lot of tanks behind their photon cannons. And so they ma they get a critical mass of like six tanks or so, and then they start churning out ghosts. And the idea is the ghosts are, um, you know, they have nice range and they actually, they counter air as well as a, like a few other units. And then the tanks are the real damage dealers and they have such huge range that you can, if you get to that critical mass, you can pretty much take everything down. The problem is like, I've been trying this build out. I'm really really not that great with Star Jeweled and it, it, it just it didn't seem to work out very well because a lot of times when I'm trying to mass up the tanks I'll get a like get zealot rushed or something or if the colossi just end up coming through and I can't lock it down it pretty much destroys um, my entire army and undoes all of that work that uh, I've put in so this build is a little bit different. Um, the way that it's done is you actually um, you collect 1,000 resources and you open up with two ultralisks. And the ultralisks are nice because they destroy everything other than you know the banshee, the banshee and the muta. And most of the time, the banshee and the muta they end up um, they can end up dying just to marine fire by themselves. And so if you open up with two ultralisks, you're almost guaranteed to do damage um, to the other guys' cannons. But after you open up with the ultralisk, the trick is to sneak in an immortal or two um, behind there and if you can get just like one or two immortals you notice a huge improvement in, in the amount of damage that's done to the cannons because really what's making the insane AI difficult is these four cannons. If you can destroy these emplacements, you can destroy the uh, the computer relatively easily because you have access to spells. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start up the game and I'll show you um, in more detail what's what I'm talking about. Now, when I played this game, too, everything was really clunky. I had a very slow start, as you can see, and I'm really not that fast at Star Jeweled anyway. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here, calmly mass up 1,000 minerals so I can get my two Ultralisks out on the field. Um, one other thing with this build is if you look at the AI, he opens up with the Colossus. And so with the Colossus, if you're using Ultralisks, you don't actually have to lock down the Colossus because um, the Colossus does almost no damage to the Ultralisk. The only unit that you want to lock down is the other Ultralisks because they're, they're pretty brutal. So here I get a little bit lucky. I got one for the Swarm and because of that I'm actually going to have three Immortals behind me. Usually it's not that good. but um, we're going to push forward and uh, let me slow this down just a little bit. So now, once I have this army, the only thing that you have to worry about is you need to keep these Ultralisks alive. If you have two Ultralisks, it's nice because they, um, when you use one healing wave, you're pretty much getting two Ultralisks back, so it's really cost efficient. So I always recommend um, using two Ultralisks as opposed to just one. The other thing I wanted to point out, one disadvantage with using the Ultralisk is that in these 1v1 games with the computer, the AI is just absolutely terrible. And so what happens more often than not is the Ultralisk, um, they'll end up after, they'll move past the cannons and they'll pretty much chomp through units in an attempt to get to the guy as spawning points and so because of that it puts ultralisks at a disadvantage because there comes a point where they're going to be shot at by four cannons now the ultralisk on the left this is actually kind of an exception where he actually went for the cannon so you don't really expect this but let me just um uh fo speed uh, show you this a little bit more you can see the immortals they're actually focusing down the cannons and that's so critical and right now I'm trying my best to keep the ultralisk alive I already lost one but there's so much momentum in my favor that I really want to keep this up and see what happens so I end up losing the ultralisk but in the absence of um, any other like real units here you can see the immortals are just focusing down the cannons like that and that's just absolutely critical so and now I've, I've locked out I've destroyed all all of the cannon emplacements, but now he's got kind of a formidable army here. So at this point, you know, it's probably not good to reinforce this current army because you're going to lose it anyway. I mean, these units are just coming out. And so now I'm going to save up another 1,000 resources and I'm going to get another pair of Ultralisks out. Now at this point, when you get rid of the cannon emplacements, the thing you really have to worry about are things like Muta and Mass Banshee. Like these Ultras are so expensive, so you want to try your best not to lose them. And one thing that 
that's nice is when they have this big death ball of army, it's it's nice if you can to engage them over by the cannons to help you out. So you lock down the Ultralisk, forget the Immor- forget the Colossus, let them take their shots because they're really not hurting the Ultralisk very much. And then you just want to save up enough for Healing Wave so that you can get two new Ultralisks again, essentially. Now, here's where it gets really scary for me. The guy, he, the computer makes mass banshees, and I'm just scrambling to get ghosts out. I get another for the swarm out, but unfortunately it's too late, so I lose the Ultralisk. But without the cannon emplacements, the ghosts actually, um, they'll end up doing pretty decently by themselves. So they'll get rid of the banshees, and they do decently against um, the marines. They're not that great versus roaches, but with how many I have, it's okay. So now what I'm really needing is a unit that can front for me, that can really absorb some of the damage. And so when I can, I can't get 1,000 resources in time, and I don't want to lose all these ghosts, so I crank out an Ultralisk. And here comes another Ultralisk. I barely have enough to lock it down. But because of that, now everything's going to be okay. That one Ultralisk is just just going to eat through whatever um, whatever it is on its path toward the computer spawning point. So you can pretty much see that. And with this co- unit combination, when there aren't photon cannons around, this is very tough to beat because the ghosts will take care of anything in the air. They're good on the ground. And um, the Ultralisk, once you get the mouth, get at the mouth of their base, you just spam healing wave. That's pretty much all you need. And there's really nothing that the computer can do to counter that. So let's go ahead and take a look. And that's it. So this build, um, it actually ended up working pretty well for me. Just a couple of key take-home points, though. When you're using this build, you always want to, for your opener, you always want to get 1,000 resources so you can open up with two Ultralisks. Never open up with one. And then and then after that, you sneak in Immortals behind it to do the real damage to the cannons. And so you want to have at least one Immortal, hopefully two. I got lucky here with three. And, um, and then you want to, afterwards, once you get this Ultralisk Immortal army, you want to just... Um, make sure that you're using healing wave on your ultralisks to keep them alive and pretty much just kind of rinse and repeat and hopefully you know you guys will have some good luck and take down the insane ai so it's pretty much it thanks for listening everybody